<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening Woo! and welcome to QTV. I'm Michael James. I'm Davina Jones. And I'm Matthew Bow. And we have another fantastic episode for you tonight. Uh, we are joined by our amazing uh, guest co-host Davina Jones again. Yeah. And hi. the fabulous Sally Morris oh, from <laughs> uh, the Lesbian Health Action Group. And yes. she's going to be here to talk to us about the International Lesbian Day that is coming up. Mm -hmm, absolutely. It's going to be very, very exciting. Yes. But uh, first of all, how are we all? I feel like there's a little therapy session for the week. Have we had a good week and a good day? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Not bad. Bit of all right. I've, been, I've been relaxing, love. Yes. I've been enjoying it. I've been, you know, selling myself on a beach. Oh, <laughs> very, very nice. Yeah, not today, because obviously I had work today, but, <laughs> but you know. I mean, I've been enjoying it. I had getting some beach away. relaxation too. I'm getting a bit of a tan now. We're getting off of my pride um, sunburn, mm. which is ah. you know, patchy, and now I'm getting a nice even brown. Excellent. Oh, I nice. see that you're loving gluten this evening. <laughs> <laughs> that is the hottest shirt I've ever seen. It's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's better than your usual black and dark colours anyway. I'll see if I can get it in right. black just for you, Michael. That's love. Excellent. Well, speaking of love, I love our news of the week. That's a hot segue. <laughs> and coming in at number three this week, uh, we have another Russian story. This time it is the International Olympic Committee, otherwise known as the IOC. Now they have come out and they have given uh, Russia the OK stamp and said that it is fine for the Olympics to go ahead there and they don't believe that there has been any violation of the IOC charter for uh, GLBTIQ people or anybody else and they think it's perfectly fine that the Olympics go ahead there. Did you guys catch up on any of that one? Someone yeah. raised an excellent point in regarding it. It takes so long to plan this and they've spent so much money. It's not like it's just going to change. But that, I guess that doesn't mean we shouldn't be outraged. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. It, it, it's at a point where I don't think anything's really going to change. And we're so now sick of talking like, about us. Oh um, my gosh, like so. Uh, <laughs> like, come, let's, Russia, let's, Russia, let's, blah blah yeah. blah. <laughs> we know it's bad. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's yeah, Putin looks it, like that dog in that meme. It's a point where I actually don't want to give any more any more time to um, <laughs> Russia because I think it's it's it's. It's so upsetting in itself that mm. we've got to actually look for ways that we can positively build a community and not continually focus on this negative stuff that's mm. happening. It gets really depressing for people. And yeah. it's not to say it's not important, but we've also got to balance it with some other stuff. And as it's well. the Winter Olympics. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's not the that's big true. one. Yeah, it's not the mainstream <laughs> one. So this is a little bit better. So. Yeah. But, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> I like yours. Next, next up for us, uh, Barilla is actually facing a boycott um, after the CEO Guido Barilla said he would never feature gay people in its pasta advertising, and that gay people could eat something else. Uh, he said that he's not homophobic and he does actually support equal marriage, but that gay families are not right for the Barilla brand. What do you guys? You think? and I were talking about this, and why does sexuality and why do couples have to be in a pasta ad? You know, like that is not a gluten that I love. Yeah. <laughs> I do not love your gluten. I want you to make gluten-free pasta. But, but you know, pasta sexy. What I love was that his name is Guido. <laughs> I, as soon What's as I heard that, that, I just went back to Guido Hatzis. Do you remember him? <laughs> no. Oh, he was a prank caller from like back in the 90s. Oh, really? He was hilarious. Being Guido, I just but thought that was gold. Okay. Interestingly enough, San Remo put out a, a, a San Remo and the other one, that the name escapes me, put out um, both ads saying that they support gay people. Mm -hmm. San Remo did an ad with the, the, the rainbow flag and the other company oh, whose name is... the pasta in yes. rainbow colours. Yes. Yes. yes, and Clever another pasta bastards. company, the other one that's always quite popular, did it, and it's pasta. Mm. Yeah. Alice, you're nodding a lot. Yeah, well, it's that? one of these really interesting things, I guess, when we're seeing these really big brands actually coming out in support of LGBTI people. And I think it's quite new. But either, it seems like either way, they seem to get backlash. Like, you know, mm. when they do come out as being positive, they get a lot of negative backlash from some parts of the community. And it's obviously when they come out against, you also get backlash as well. So it seems really interesting mm. the way that, but also I guess that brands and, and markets are playing into LGBT rights. I, I think that one of the things that I find really interesting is this whole concept of family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what they've actually said is that 
the Brilla brand supports the, or is the vision of traditional, traditional family. Mm. And I think there's no such thing as traditional pasta. family mm. anymore. Mm. It's, it's, you've got single parent families, uh, you've got um, same sex families, you've got um, brother and uncle families, you've mm. got you know sisters yeah. raising kids. It's there's no such thing as this traditional family anymore. Family mm. is whatever it is made to be. Yeah, and and I'm, I'm, I'm getting, getting really sick of damn business families. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm getting sick of all of these boycotts because mm. yeah. I think they mean diddly shit at the end mm. of the day. Like people say that, oh, yeah, we're going to boy we're going to boycott this because it supports gays, and yeah. it doesn't affect their bottom line. And yeah. the, and when all the gays say, you know, we're going to you know boycott the the vodka, or now we're going to boycott the pasta, mm. really? Because how many of you really actually took note of what brand of pasta you had in the cupboard? Gays don't really eat carbs. Yeah. <laughs> Unless exactly. it's freshly made by you yeah. know. And by, then by we someone. can. Then we can. Yeah. Anyway, do we really need the support of an Oreo to tell us that our marriages are valid? Mm. Um, so <laughs> the third thing in a local, lo more local setting, uh, we have a new gender clinic opening at Healthy Communities in Brisbane. So the state's leading GP in transgender health, Dr Gail Behrman, has opened a bulk billing clinic at the site of Biala, which the Newman government recently closed, uh, for transgender people, which will be doing uh, appointments on Wednesdays. So it'll be completely free, bulk billed. To call for an appointment, you can dial 3017-1777. Uh, it was funded largely by Shelley Argent, who was the, the head of the Queensland chapter of uh, P flag for a long time. She was a and national spokeswoman as well. Yeah, and, and the That's doctor awesome. mentioned it's a shame that just as society is on the cusp of change, everything is defunded. And mm -hmm. that's what annoyed me, as you were saying. So the Newman government has cut back Biola, which is now closed, yet Robert Cavallucci, LNP, and Vicky Howard, LNP, both attended and smiling and how much they support it. Mm. So, you know, get your photo up, but you've already shut it. So, you know, don't uh, fall for it. It's really interesting that I'm seeing with these politicians. There's a few of them, and like Cavallucci mm. and, and Howard, that uh, stepping forward to involving themselves in, in these parts of our community while their party is having negative effects on our community but they're trying to be these voices. I, I, it's an interesting place to see what they're trying to do. You see the good intentions behind it and then really? you see what do you the party's doing. Do you think it's not doing. just a photo op because surely they could have influenced oh. it. It's their area. It's Brisbane Central. All politics is photo ops. Yeah, exactly. Okay, full stop yeah. because that's yeah. what people see. They don't see what happens behind, you know, in the background. Um, but I do, f I think, it, I mean, all change is going to be difficult. And when you're, they, they came in with this brand new agenda, we're going to change what we fund and how we do it. And because we think our way is the right way. Mm -hmm. I think the issue is over time that you actually disrupt any kind of good work that you do with that. And instead of, you know, you end up throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So yeah. you end up closing down services that are doing amazing things just to prove that your way is better. But mm. by the time the next election cycle comes around, you can't achieve any outcomes because you've had to start from scratch again. Just a waste of money. And that's the same with any kind of industry, education, healthcare, whatever. And meanwhile, people's health is suffering, so. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, that was our news articles for the week. Uh, now, if you've got anything you'd like to contribute to the show, we would love to hear from you. So please make sure you shoot us an email to qtv at 31.com.au and let us know what you'd like to see. And also catch up with us on all of the social medias. So you can jump on our Facebook page, shoot us a message uh, at QTV Brisbane. It's also QTV Brisbane on Twitter as well. We are live tweeting during this episode and all of our episodes. So if you've got something to say about what we're saying, jump in and tell us and we'll have a little chit chat with you and you can take a photo of it and uh, Instagram us as well. We do all of them with that cool and hip and down with it all. So we're going to be back after this very short break uh, to have our wonderful interview with Sally Morris from Lesbian Health Action Group. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tonight's special guest is uh, the co-chair of the Lesbian Health Action Group and coordinator of this weekend's International Lesbian Day event. Welcome to Sally Morris. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks for coming in. Yeah, now, good. tell us, what is International Lesbian Day yeah. and why do we celebrate it? Well, it, it's been around for a while. In Brisbane, we've been celebrating it for about oh, seven years or so. Um, but it's actually been around since the 80s. And, and actually, when we've done research about where it's come from, we're actually not been able to find the true history of the day. Uh, but in Brisbane, it's been certainly about a day about community, women coming together and celebrating their community. Um, but not just all about drinking and music. It's actually much more about engaging with each other and you know having some great performances and some great interactive workshops as well. So what happened?
happens on the day? What's the the run yeah. down, the lowdown of the day? The lowdown of the day. So, um, so the Lesbian Health Action Group have been running this for about three years, um, and we have um, uh, so sort of two stages with some great local queer women performers who are there on the day. And this year we got we got um, poets and comedians as well as bands and singers. Um, so we have that which really draws in a lot of people. Um, then we also have interactive spaces. So we got two workshop spaces this year and there's We've had our trivia, which has always been a really popular space. People love lesbian trivia. <laughs> um, and we've got yoga, and we've actually got a lesbian sex discussion going on, which I think will go down pretty popular as well. Um, so it's stuff about really get involved in the community. Um, we also have a marketplace as well. So this is where local um, organisations, businesses and community groups show off their, their wares and, and again trying to really connect with people. Um, it's, fun, it's, like, it's really but the whole day is actually a big fundraiser for the Lesbian Health Action Group. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. do you have a two for actually combined trivia with a sex discussion? Because I reckon that would be really I'm actually interesting. Like, <laughs> that too. Um, my, my partner's part of the, the team working on the trivia and I might actually put, uh, suggest that maybe we can. Um, <laughs> Multiple choice. Yeah, what would you do if? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What actually, do you do with this? Pretty well, actually. Totally. Yeah. Now, this event uh, was started, as you said, quite a few years ago. Now, yeah, it's yeah. been held uh, in West End here yes. in Davies, uh, in, was it Davies Park? Park. Yes, uh, it's been held at the Wickham, Wickham Hotel, Hotel the last couple of years. Yes, it was huge last year with Becky. Cole. It was crowded as yeah. And so this year, <laughs> where are we going this year? So this it's year, been moved. we've actually moved the venue this year. So we're going to Riverside Receptions, which is on Oxley Drive down at New Farm. Uh, the move was for a couple of reasons. One, like last year, we really sort of outgrew the venue a bit uh, and also the Wickham's getting renovations um, around that time of year so it wasn't guaranteed it was going to be available but given that last year it was so crowded and every year we get more and more people and it gets bigger and bigger every year and we thought okay let's go to a bigger venue we can spread out and it has the opportunity to have the two stages and the two workshop spaces as well as we're having a family play area as well with Rainbow Families Queensland facilitating that yeah. so it's just a chance just to really spread out um, but it's a beautiful venue right by the river. Yeah, it sounds great it's yeah. International Lesbian Day. Yeah. I'm not a lesbian, but I'd love to come. You're not Can a lesbian? I come? Oh. No, I'm not uh, a lesbian. Do you have to be an international lesbian? <laughs> yes. No. It's actually one of the days we, we, the way the Lesbian Health Action Group work, we're actually very inclusive um, in, our, in our framework about who, who a lesbian is. But actually, International Lesbian Day has always been open to our allies as well. So we really encourage our gay guys, our trans folk and our straight supporters to come along and celebrate yeah. the day with us. I, so yeah, so come along. Yeah. I, I love hearing about the inclusion and I think yeah. that's probably why you're growing so much which is yes. fantastic. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, um, so you definitely, it, it's such an inclusive thing that it's yeah. family friendly yes. and transgender people so anyone yeah. who identified as a woman attracted to women is invited to attend. Yeah and even that we, even that we that definition of woman is mm. very open for us in the Lesbian Health Action Group. Yeah, we yeah. use the lesbian as it's a term of convenience. Mm. Um, um, it's really difficult to say this is event for same-sex attracted women, mm. um, you know, female, you know, it's really, mm. so it's one of those terms of convenience, but um, so in all of our work, we try to be very inclusive of all sexualities and all women, regardless of birth gender, you know, assigned gender, current gender, um, genitals, it doesn't actually really matter. Um, and, but actually, International Lesbian Day is one of the times we do open our events up to, to our supporters as well. Um, yeah. So you're talking no. about diversity. Yeah. Oh, sorry, What's Michael. Oh, talking oh. over the top. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say, because I was yeah. looking over your guests before, one yeah. of my favourite lesbians with guitars is going to be there. Yes, Christy Apps. Yes. Yes, I'm lucky I guess right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's that's yeah. what I was going to ask next, because yeah. there's such a diversity. You talk about yeah. diversity, but it's really reflected in the yes. actual performances. Mm. And I guess we up. try and find performances, performers that are a variety of different things. So it's not just people for the younger crowd, but there's you know, people, you know, different identities, different tastes in music, um, a bunch of different type of people there on the day. Comedians. Comedians, uh, poetry. Yeah, I, love, mm. I love poetry. You know. Kimberly Lyle. Yeah, uh, she's hilarious. Poet Betsy Turcott. Yeah. Who's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. I love queer poetry. Um, so that's for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, musical performers, uh, Nicolaine Martin or Nico yeah. Martin in Blue Honey. Yes, uh, absolutely. Lucinda Shaw, who you yes. might remember from Isis Days. I yeah. love and uh, I've just completely drawn a blank. Silver Circus. Yes. Thank you, who I love. Julia Rose, amazing queer performer. Anu Sava as yes. well. Local artist who moved to Nashville, Nashville and is now coming back and performing as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, DJ Arcee, DJ Mikey. And yep. oh, who's them singing? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. um, yeah. Demina. Who is it? So how much fun is it to put together yeah. this event? I love it, actually. And this is the third year I've done it. So um, it was first run by um, City Liquors, Monique Forrest, started off in Brisbane. And about three years ago, she said, I need 
need to take a break from it and hand it over. And I was like, I need to do this. And actually, this is first year. I mean, I nearly get a break, nervous breakdown every year, <laughs> but I, I love it. I really love creating spaces for people to engage. I love creating where people can connect and I love pulling it all together, the performances, the the, the workshops, the storeholders, the volunteers, and we utilize a, a whole bunch of volunteers. Um, and I, what I love most is on the day, you just see people that connecting. And, and last year, I remember at the front, there was this, an older lesbian couple and I sort of was rushing past it and they went, and they looked really nervous. I said, are you guys okay? And go, we haven't been out to a lesbian event in like 20 years. Oh, and I'm like, yes. come on in, it's <laughs> awesome. And I rushed off to do something. And that, but that's what makes me feel really um, proud in, in creating these spaces. And, and I mean, a lot of people probably don't know who's behind a lot of these events in the community, but that's what I get the buzz out of is seeing those people connect and belong and you see those friendships happening and then you know people met at International Lesbian Day and then you see them a couple of weeks later down the Wickham or something you know and you see people connecting. And it's so yeah. important to have a different space other than yes. nightclubs or that sort of yeah. thing. And you can actually talk and foster a relationship which is just yeah. yeah it's a nice change. Yeah it is it's moving and I hear that a lot when people are along at different nightclub spaces they're going but no one spoke to me mm. or I couldn't hear or people already had their groups. Music in your thing. Mm. Yeah dum, 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 and this dum. is a space where we actually also doing a dating mailbox where people can buy a number and people can leave messages mm. for you but even like if you have friendships and so it's really about deliberately inviting people to connect with other people mm. now yeah. uh, it's Sunday 13th of October yes R Riverside reception Riverside. Said Oxlade Drive right on the river there it's at New Farm beautiful yeah. And you've got a Facebook page as well, which is? Yeah, um, if you search for International Lesbian Day 2013, you will find the Facebook event, or you can visit the Healthy Communities web page, which is www.qahc.org.au slash ILD. Great. And we'll put see that up on, on Sunday. our Facebook page <laughs> yeah. as well, so you can yeah. see it. Awesome. Thanks wonderful. for joining us, Sally. No worries. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to QTV, and we are here with Sally Morris, and we're going to do subject you to our quick six. Yes. Let us get started. All right. All right. Straight off the bat, Seinfeld or Friends? Seinfeld. Ellen or Oprah? Actually, Ellen. Oh. Yeah, I love Ellen. Oh. I yeah. love Ellen. <laughs> um, favorite music? Oh, I'm actually terrible. I don't know. I don't know. No favorite band? No. No, God. <laughs> Which of them? I'm semi femme. I'm somewhere in the middle. Oh. Fence sitter. Uh. <laughs> If you had to give up dairy or gluten, what would you give up? Dairy. <laughs> dairy. Okay. Yep. And w who is your first band you ever saw? Um, 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 I actually don't know. I'm not big into the music. I think it might have been Casey Chambers, I think was probably my Not a bad choice. Minutes, um, by performance I went to. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now it's we're right. here and <laughs> we wanted to give you an update on the, the rumors we were hearing about Freddie Mercury. Tell oh. us what you heard about Daniel yes, Radcliffe. Yes, those rumours were swirling, <laughs> swirling. They're doing, they're doing a movie biopic on, on Freddie Mercury, obviously. Now, they were originally talking that Sasha Baron Cohen was going mm. to be it, which would have been incredible, mm. uh, because I love Sasha Baron Cohen. He's Bruno and other people. Great, um, but great worried, character actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but they were worried it would be too funny. And so the rumours were swirling that it was going to be Daniel Radcliffe from mm. Harry Potter, because he'll do anything at the moment to get it, to get rid of the Harry image um, and he's, he's doing some other gay characters he has done uh, and so they said it would be him uh, and he has actually come out in an interview and said no he said I'm terrible for that role he said it's just tabloid fodder and when people want to say something they just throw one of our names and we're done so it's not Daniel Radcliffe disappointing runners will still abound <laughs> he's got very a point though he'd be, he'd be crap yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 he's got a very point. forthcoming <laughs> and you're giving us an update on the transgender teen from California the homecoming queen homecoming oh. queen uh, we want a happy ending yes well I'm going to give you one <laughs> <laughs> in, but in the loveliest way possible and in the most PG way possible uh, you no, Casey Lynn Campbell uh, was uh, voted homecoming queen, prom queen, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, and then came out after that you know, with a really disturbing kind mm. of um, video, really upset about the bullying that she'd received as a result of this. Um, now the No Hate campaign has actually contacted her, the photographers contacted her to actually take part in a series of photographs mm. for mm. them, and now she is a 
post a child for no hate. Nice. Oh, That's bless. so good, giving good her a bit of good publicity after the negative yes. reactions of late. Mm -hmm. But she's a great example and it's good to have her there. We also wanted to talk about On Hollywood and, and what's going on there. A study has shown that over half of LGBT Hollywood actors have heard anti-gay slurs by directors and producers on set. Mm -hmm. Now, that is horrifying. Hollywood and theatre and film is such a uh, LGBT friendly industry seemingly but that seems to not be the case can you believe that mm. well, when you have see, seen here the videos of Christian Bale when he was going off I'm not surprised well, it's clearly not enough hairdressers on set that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a very it's just it's one of those things that it's it's unexpected and you'd think there would be enough people in the industry speaking up and trying to you know stop it but it is a high nine intensity thing nine percent of them reckon they've been turned down for a role because they were gay Oh. 9%. No, it's kind of interesting though. Who was the guy that came out recently? Uh, the There's like 25 of them. Prison um, Break. Well, oh, Wentworth, yeah. Wentworth, Wentworth Miller. Miller. Wentworth Miller. You know, it took a long time for him mm. to be able to come out. You know, and he's gorgeous. He's the sort of mm. one that goes, you know, you can come out as mm. gay and women are still going to swoon all over you and not yeah, worry like about Martin. you sleeping at mm. night. Women are like, na 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 Ricky Martin. What annoys me is that every single actor who is straight, who plays a gay character, wins an Oscar. Like, Mm. instantly and oh they're so fabulous they can act so well there are gay Short characters hair. out there yeah. gay people out there all the time playing straight characters and you don't hear the same thing you have a point nicole kidman the hours mm. oh yes you're right everybody yeah. even she won an oscar we thought it was impossible she didn't even have <laughs> facial movements it's all the botox <laughs> oh, she um, can't move also, her face. <laughs> also the un aids official has come out and said that the hiv epidemic could be over by 2030 uh, which he's the executive um, sorry the deputy executive director i wanted to get his title right which is horrifying do we really think can, can we afford to become complacent to think that it's going to be over by then. I find it very, very interesting. Very, you're in the health mm. area with the, the health action group. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think on that one, Sally? I think that is, is actually quite interesting. I actually hadn't heard that. Um, I actually think it's quite interesting. So again, that would people become complacent? Are they going to find a cure mm. and I just have to worry about it? Or is, is he saying that because of the health motion that we're doing that because it's going to disappear? I'm curious about why he thinks it's going to disappear. Mm. by 2030. Scott and Hita, we can get to the end of the epidemic because we have treatments and ways to control the infection. We are making progress without a doubt. Mm. My question is, we might have better ways of controlling the infections and, and better education, but mm. will the tr other treatments able get are going to be accessible to mm. everyone? I was actually going to say well. on a global scale, um, you know, it's certainly in Australia, HIV treatments are very, very accessible. But mm. on a global scale, getting treatments uh, when they have patents and they cost a, a lot of money to, for people in say Africa to access well, those. Speaking of which, bringing it back from globally yeah. to locally, there's actually been an announcement. Um, everybody knows Quack or Queensland Association of Healthy Communities. They've actually announced uh, in the last week or two that they are going to change names and go back to being the Queensland AIDS Council mm. instead of healthy communities. So there's an interesting, you know, at the same time as this sort of information is coming mm. out, this focus going back onto it. So it's still an epidemic. Mm. Let's, let's be honest about it. Yeah. Criticism there. And, and also, Michael, you were talking about the Vatican and the, the church exhibit, the, the, the photography exhibit in churches that has got everybody in a furor. Yes, yes. I love looking at these pictures. I've got them here on my little piece of paper. <laughs> um, and it's got the, the, the same-sex couples um, making out, basically. Well, not making out, you know. It's lovely and loving. It's little little kisses mm. and, and hugs um, in, in churches. It's a, a photographer, Gonzalo Orquin. Mm. At the altar. Um, Yes, mm. the altar. It is the altar. There, there are go. even Good straight work, couples Michael. taking part. And so the Catholic Church mm. has, has basically contacted the, the people involved and said, do not do this. This is disrespectful to religion. And unfortunately, mm. it seems to have slowed it down, if not stopped yeah, it. So. Gonzalo is, is contesting the decision. Mm. How is love disrespectful uh, exactly. to religion? Exactly. How is love oh, anything mm. against mm. it? Mm. Just, just a question. The amount of things mm. that goes on in those churches, and they're saying, that's bad? Yeah. Like, mm. Gay Jesus offends Christians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. I, I was asking you earlier, which Christians <laughs> does it offend? Because I know quite a few Christians to be like, I'm down with I that. I don't know. That's I just awesome. love the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, I, I think Jesus stuff. would love that there is love in the church. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Done right. That's what love thy neighbour. First thing. Mm -hmm. oh, we wanted to talk about events as well. So we wanted to talk to, uh, can you remind our viewers yeah. all about Lesbian International Absolutely. Day? Absolutely. On uh, Sunday the 13th of October from 12 noon to late or whenever you can party on to <laughs> at um, Riverside Receptions which is Oxlade Drive down at New Farm. Come along, bring your family, bring your friends. Uh, it's going to be a fabulous day. And it's yeah. inclusive. It's, it's for yeah. the people who don't normally so go to other things. So Absolutely. get involved. Come along. You know, Michael will be there. there. He'll be yeah. wearing um, his happy face. <laughs> 
Well, come and say, come say hi to me as well. Come say hi to yeah. Sally. I'll be yeah. there emceeing. So D I'll yeah, Davina's going to be emceeing, which I think is going to be marvellous. You've emceed the last two events, I think, yep. as well. So um, something going to be awesome. She does like being a dyke on the mic. Now, when can we get <laughs> yeah. you diking on miking again? Well, I actually just whizzed from the studio over here because ah. we do 7 till 9 o'clock for Triple Z, 102.1 FM, uh, yes. 7 till 9 on a Wednesday night. Our viewers love you and it's a great listen, so make sure you do check in. As always, contact us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, QTV Brisbane. Get in touch with us. We love hearing your feedback and it's great to have your viewers' perspective. We're here for you and that's the main reason we're here, so get in touch with us. Uh, thank you very much for watching another episode of QTV Brisbane. I'm Matthew Bowe. I'm Davina Jones. <laughs> and I'm Michael James. Thank you and good night. Woo!